Crusader King as and Game of Thrones as welcome to uh, Ned Stark. Ned Stark, a man who clearly in this timeline went a little bit insane following the death of his son, Lord Rob, at the age of baby. In his desperation, in his madness, in his sadness, whatever. You don't know what kind of mental effect that would have on the man named Jon Snow as legitimate heir. And then out in the wilderness, he finds a child raised by wolves. Maybe a blessing from the old gods. Clearly something in Ned's brain snapped because he brought this child home and named it his heir. And I mean, that's not out of character because he's done it before. <laughs> and I mean, look, they didn't have any kids for a long, long time. And then suddenly three sons came along all at once. Ned has betrothed Lord Marin, his adopted son, off to his... Uh, uh, off to Benjen's daughter so that, that, you know, there are no debates amongst the vassals of whether or not they're a legitimate Stark. Their children will be Stark, both by blood and by name and by adoption. He's a true Stark as far as things go anyway. And then, of course, Jon Snow, in a cruel twist of irony, is betrothed off to Robert Baratheon's daughter. Not only, of course, getting that alliance there, but also... Uh, just being just being incredible. Just being an incredible twist of irony that Robert Baratheon will be spinning in his grave should he ever find out the truth. Then, uh, lots of people pointed out in the comments that, yeah, that even though, you know, we got rid of Rob to uh, allow the timeline to go in a different direction. It'll be something interesting never seen before. This kid has ended up just being like a compassionate paragon, like almost uh, 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 not that far detached from Rob anyway, right? Just trusting, fickle, gregarious, a, a knight, uh, uh, an actual proper anointed knight with um, you know, very, very good diplomacy skills. He's ended up being a uh, boring, safe Rob Stark anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just how these things happen, right? These things work out like that. I think it's incredible. I think we've ended up with such a weird playthrough. A lot of people have asked, and this is a base game event. I don't know why I can't hover over modifiers, too. People are saying have a look, and it just, just doesn't work. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. Let's see if I can fix it, because some of these modifiers are going to be... We, we need to know what they are, right? Because we're not going to be able to identify them just from symbol. Anyway, um, yeah, no, this is a, a base game event. The Son of Wolves event is base game. So the fact that we had that happen to uh, the house whose sigil is a wolf is superb. You know, in a winter Christmassy series is just such an incredible coincidence. How could we not take it? Now, now, there was a comment last episode, and I think this is a fantastic idea, that we should save up and have a tournament when both Maran and Jon Snow are, or Jon Stark, I should say, of course, now, are of age and can take part in the tournament. I'd like to take it one step further. What about Lord Rickard or some of Eddard's other children, Arthur and uh, Darren? What if we also assign them to the tournament? We could even go one step further, right? Because I feel like Eddard kind of lost his mind a little bit. Maybe he's coming back to his old self. Eddard's a very... Um, he's a very just man, isn't he? He's very much a man who believes in the... In, I think, the will of the people a little bit. He's a very just and, and courteous ruler. We could always set it, and I kind of hate this idea, so I might not do it. We could always try and set it up to be elective and let the people decide whether they want the adopted Lord Marin, the bastard, or the supposed bastard son, of course, of Eddard Stark, or whether they want his 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 only legitimate child that, that's kind of in line right now. So I'm not sure. I think it could be an interesting idea to, to kind of let the vassals decide where we go, but this is fine. Honestly, I'm totally fine with this. It's such a weird coincidence that we're just going to let him cook. Oh, God, this is interesting. Okay, Lord John of the Vale. This is John Aaron II. Bear in mind, Eddard, uh, it, this is John Aaron II, right? Parents. Lord Dennis of the Moongates and... No, this isn't the guy I'm thinking of. Wait, who is this? Right, so in law, they had, uh, so, so John Aaron, sorry, I've got to try and find out what the hell's going on with this family tree then. So, so John Aaron and Lysa Tully married, and they had that kid, that's little Robin or whatever he's called in the show. And then that kid, in theory, uh, of course, wasn't born yet by the time we started. I wonder if he died without an heir and it went to a cousin, Lord John, because in the books, it's Harold Harding, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so this is just like a different Lord John of the Vale. Weird. How did this happen then? Donald Aaron... Yeah, it's like a cousin. The original Aaron branch must have died out. We can see the title history, right? Lord John the Old had a son called Lord Baron of the Vale, but I wonder why he didn't inherit. I'm not sure. Inherited. Look, was he not born yet? And she was pregnant when he died? I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, that's that's very strange. What I was going to say is Ned Stark was um was squire to this guy, so it would make sense if we were his squire, but he wants to he wants to go be squire under Roderick. I mean, to be fair, he is bearer of the Lord Sideburn, so you know what? I will absolutely allow it. Welcome. 
And then apparently, oh no, he's went there to become his teacher. What just happened there? Benjamin Stark became Keeper of the Lord Cyburns. What happened to Lord Roderick? He, oh, he actually did move to his court. No, he's not. He's my courtier. He's just gone over there to go teach him. Weird. I guess he, he's not allowed to be a knight whilst he's also in someone else's court. God knows. Okay, fair enough then. That's a little annoying because our accolade has lost some stuff. My goodness, being a ruler really does take it out on you. I have to toil all day and much of the night in order to maintain my lands. The peasants will lead blessed lives in that respect. They don't have the pressures of rulership to weigh down on them. Oh, how terrible. But it's a little net would do me good. No, I have work to do. Stress him out, but he gains more prestige. Or he has a nap. This is Ned Stark. He would never, he would never sleep on the job. He's a dutiful man. And if I'm not mistaken, that's our final... There it is. Our final martial lifestyle perk to become gallant. I think that's perfect. I think that suits the character perfectly. And I think we'll do a, uh, a 360 and we'll walk away over to the diplomatic lifestyle. I think at this point, there's, there's going to be a lot of unspoken tension in the family. I mean, there was when he brought Jon Snow back to then adopt a second child. Catelyn's probably very pissed. And then we follow it up by having that kid be the heir, knocking Jon Snow back down. I, I, there's a lot of tension. A lot of unspoken tension, even if they are friends. It might all bubble over one day. You never know. Family focus. We focus on becoming patriarch. We keep them on the straight and narrow. Ah, hillside fields constructed in Brandswood. That's good. Brandswood, we will uh, turn into something a bit more... A bit more of a moneymaker, I suppose. Because being up here in the north, even though we are Lord Paramount of all this land. Of all of this land right here. Shitloads. We're making 6.7 gold a month, which is pretty pathetic. It's all a bloody wasteland, right? You can't really do many farming and that type of things. Um, shit. We could build that caravan, sorry, which I might do. Oh, apiaries. Hello. Reduced cost for feasting. Its final uh, benefits aren't massive. Really, I should be upgrading Winterfell proper, but there isn't really much to... Much to upgrade. We could build a new settlement if we really wanted to and focus all of our stuff on Winterfell. That would work a lot better because then we can collect taxes. I mean, look at how much there is in Winterfell to develop. In the long term, this would be a much, much better play. 164 gold. That's my tournament money right there. I think we'll sit on the gold for a while. Eddard's not the type of guy that should be building cities anyway. That's just not That's not his life. What is his life? I'm um, getting his head cut off long before now, mainly, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with him in his older age, to be honest. He's just dutiful to a fault. Very boring character. Lord Baron is at last shown to the Great Hall of Waste no time before walking up to my throne. God damn you. He wants us to fortify the marches. Um, I, we've got to do it. He's he's I, so just. Oh, I hate him. Ooh, a frog. To <laughs> <laughs> the most exciting thing that's going to happen in Ned Stark's life. Today is such a lovely day. I've decided to take a wander around a bog, taking in nature and enjoying the war wilderness away from the castles and people. As I'm idly walking, I spot a jumping white critter in the corner of my eye. I slowly turn around to see a giant albino bullfrog staring past me. I crouch down and approach it, and take in its majesty. After all, an albino creature like this is not long to live out here. Should we pet the frog, or should we kick the frog? What a bizarre event. Obviously, we're going to pet the frog. Bullfrog? That's an odd name. I'd have called him Chaz Wazzers. We need to get a new barber in Winterfell. That's maybe where I should spend my money. Picking up padded swords for a sparring match with my son Rickard, I noticed a tattered journal on the sideboard. From the cover, it seems to contain exercises and the best practices on pertaining to martial arts. Oh, that thing. I'm mostly ready for the illustrations. You can borrow it. Intriguing. We should try it out. This will greatly further Rickard's... Oh, no. Rickard's going to become... John uh, uh, is going to become... Uh, <clears throat> What's his name? Rob, Rob, that's right. Rob Stark 2.0, because he's going to become the Mighty Warrior, isn't he? We should try it out. This kid's going to become the Mighty Warrior. Marin's going to be the legendary diplomat, and then Jon Snow's going to be the wet fart. The craven, fickle, chaste Jon Snow. Look at how terrible he is. Oh, God. And I give him a martial education, too, because that's his duty. Because Ned Stark's not the, not the sharpest, uh, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, huh? We will receive Lord Baron in your royal court. If you're asking me for more money... Quite the opposite. He's come to bow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, well, Jon Snow's almost old enough that we can see what is about to come of him. Lord Morkar. Ah, oh, Lord Morkar brings with him generous gifts of a whole ten gold. Thank you, Lord Morkar. Oh. Shit. Well, that was unexpected. Um, Queen Daenerys, a Targaryen claimant, has landed in the Lordship of Griffin's Roost. With 10,000 men under the command of Harry of the Golden Company. Oh, shit. As the memory of Aegon, Aegon the Conqueror's disposed dynasty resurfaces, Westeros is once again at war. Banners will be called, swords sworn, and oaths made as the stranger returns 
to the Seven Kingdoms. What happened to Daenerys then? Oh, this is really interesting. So, uh, in the books, right, she uh, marries Khal Drogo. Well, in the show, she marries Khal Drogo, gets the Dothraki. You know what happens there. And in the show, it eventually becomes um, <laughs> a nightmare, a living, waking nightmare. In the books, it's still obviously up to uh, up to debate what's going to happen. So, the Golden Company were a... Um, were a band made by, was it Aegle Bittersteel? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've interfaced with Game of Thrones. A, a Targaryen bastard, basically, for the purpose of, of putting them back on the throne. That's interesting. So she went down that route and said, that's very cool, though. Perhaps this could be advantageous. I presume there's an alternate one where um, Griff comes back instead of Daenerys. Let's see what they have to offer. You will play Daenerys. I'm okay, thank you. That's a really cool event, though. Perhaps this could be advantageous. Why? Uh, maybe I'd start saying that as like, okay, Robert Brathen can pro prove he's a good ruler and he can keep the realms unified. That's, of course, what he's thinking. Okay. King Robert is being attacked by Daenerys Targaryen. My god, this kicked off. Queen Daenerys of the Targaryen host has risen up against King Robert of the Iron Throne in her invasion. The rebels will pay dearly. Obviously, Ned Stark would join. I mean, he helped Rob overthrow the Targaryens in the first place. Why we would ever say no, I'm not sure. What's going on then? Has the Reach joined Daenerys? You son of a bitch. Oh, God. Defenders. You're attacking King Robert. So the Tyrells joined Daenerys. Need a water. The sisters. Northbridge, Choice March, Hadlowfield, and 90 more allies. Dawn also joined Daenerys. The Vale joined? No, no, the Vale are neutral. The Neck have remained neutral. Oh, God. Having Dawn and the Reach on their sides is going to be a problem, especially because Robert Brathian just sliced the head off of... Or, or, or just got into a big war with Tywin. I'm really surprised Tywin has backed Robert. But I suppose it's going to be Tywin's grandchild that takes the throne next, so that makes sense that he'd want to defend it. That makes sense. Oh, shit, this is a proper civil war. So it's the, it's the Kingslands, the Riverlands, and the Westerlands, and the North, or most of the North. But well, even then, not most of all those other places. Versus the Reach, Dawn. Dawn is totally unified. Dawn and then the Vale remaining neutral. Good God, the Vale could swing it if they decided to come in one side or the other. Yikes. I'm not going to be able to bring many troops because not all of my bannermen wanted to join. The Neck, Wolfswood, King's Course. We got, we got the strongest vassals. This is a nightmare. Okay, well, let's do what we can then. Let's go, Neddy. Never expected this would happen again. Huh? Oh, Jesus, look. Enemy ally joins the war. Oh, God, they're all joining Daenerys. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Tywin just attacked Robert. Holy shit. Lord Tywin of the Westerlands is risen up against King Robert the Iron Throne in the Dissolution War. I must choose to stand with Robert or join Tywin. We are going to stand with Robert until we're all dead and buried. Okay? Friends till the end. This is a nightmare. This is a waking nightmare. A hedge wizard. Um, hello, Hedge Wizard. Let's see what you have to say, I suppose. The Hedge Wizard emptied a bag of various animal bones onto the floor. He stood up and declared him s that sand would sell for a premium in Sunspear. Um, this man is a lunatic. He's trying to sell sand to the Dornish. I understand the joke. Fine, go on then. I feel like Ned would be quite desperate, because this is a lost war, I think. Oh, Christ. What has happened? Why have the Riverlands gone independent then? The Riverlands pulled out of the war. The Riverlands pulled out of the war. So it's the Westerlands versus the Iron Throne. Then Reach and Dawn and Daenerys versus the Iron Throne. The Vale are independent. Oh, God. It's me and Robert. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. Send it. Good luck. Good luck, Ned. We're dead as dicks, aren't we? Oh, my God. He actually sold sand to the Dornish. We got 200 gold. A large group of orphans of Greenblood paid him an exorbitant price for the sand. We just sold sand to orphans. That's amazing. That's not the type... Oh, God, look, my whole council has disbanded. Lord Roderick, you're going to be my Castellum. Great John. Great John Umber is going to be... No, 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 no. Um, Maester Lewin. Why is Maester Lewin not the Maester? The Maester can also be the Chancellor. Let's put this guy on. No, Lord Marin can be Chancellor, please, by all means. Steward, a random courtier. Lord, Lord Barrett, Lord Jory of Wolf's Branch. Oh, my God. Okay, here. I just put whoever's qualified at this point. Roose Bolton can be spy master because he's very appropriate at that, though that might put us in a very dangerous position. Um, Lord Berwick. No, let's let's put Lord Baron as Admiral. 
This is a goddamn nightmare. We should probably go for scatter the fleets. Increases our supply duration. Oh my god. <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> We're so doomed. What have I done? <laughs> Train commanders increase their effectiveness. Oh god. Um, we could potentially be up to 38%, depending on how long this war goes on for, but I feel like this could be quick. I feel like because of Robert Baratheon executing Cersei and not having the Westerlands backing him when everyone else went against him. Bear in mind, originally in the War of the Targaryens, uh, the Reach did back the Targaryens, so this makes sense. Dawn, of course, Elia Martell was betrothed to Rhaegar Targaryen, so this all makes perfect sense. And I hate every second of it because we're on the we're on the losing side here. We're about to get smashed, and we might get executed. I remember the day when my son Rickard was born to my Lady Paramount Catelyn, my implacable son. Memories like these bring me comfort, no matter what happens. I know that my family is there. Winter is coming. I whisper under my breath. Yes, it is. Um, are we going to give the boy some money? No. That seems really bizarre. That doesn't seem like the type of thing Ned would do. That's that's real Lannister behaviour. Lord Jory has forced his way into becoming my steward. My Chancellor's dying. Oh, God. Lord Rorge. Incredible name. Follows the naming scheme perfectly. Are we allowed to cross at the Twins? They can't like, lock us off, can we? Cape of Eagles is backing Daenerys. So we could go there and siege them. They have a pretty good fleet coming out of Sea Guard. So this, this would help. Let's go do that. My money. Oh, Jesus. The ocean waters rage and rage. What, what do you mean the ocean waters? Even this I shall overcome. Oh, is, is, is this a nightmare? In my dream. Oh, God. A maddening array of the raw force of nature's destruction. He's having uh, uh, horrible, uh, uh, ominous dreams. Even this I shall overcome. Yeah, believe in the old gods. John comes of age. He is terrible. He's really not good at all. He was knighted, to be fair. Neophyte fighter. Okay, he's not bad. He's okay at leading a siege. I would never put him on the siege. He's got three marshal and he's a coward. Okay, are we going to marry them off? Yes, we should. Let's lock in that alliance. It's a, it's a show of good faith to rob. To, to Robert Baratheon. Big Bobby B himself. We can expose his parentage. Oh my god, if Daenerys takes the throne, why not do that? Because then John, who is the firstborn son of Daenerys' older brother, is technically further up in line to the throne than she is. What happens then? I mean, we might have nothing to lose because Robert Baratheon is going to be... Hey, my son was knighted. Great. Robert Baratheon might be about to be... Oh, my God. The Lannisters. We're going to fight Tywin's armies. I'm a big fan of this. I'm a huge fan of this. Where did he go, that coward? He's right there. Where is he, where is he heading to? Chances are even. We're defending in a forest. They've got more mana arms counters. It's going to be very, 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 very close. 22,000, same army quality versus 21,000. They have way more mana arms, but they've got a lot of trebuchet. They've also got a lot of horsemen that we don't have. We've got 15 knights, though. So have they. It's all on. It's all basically going to be carried by Ned Stark. I think we see what happens, because I think this is more interesting than trying to... Oh, God, they sent... They got some reinforcements. Okay, so we're going to get absolutely smashed here. Oh, Officer of the Lord's Elite. Brilliant. Because <laughs> one of my knights died. Yeah, shockingly, we got our ass handed to us there. I don't know why that was much of a... It was obviously going to happen. What happened? Sorry, did Benjen die? No, it was a pop about Benjen. I thought he might have died then. Okay, hold on. We need more... Where's Robert? Maybe we should just go and help him instead of... Oh, God. where Where is he leading troops? Why are you down there? He's down in the Stormlands. Why? Oh, no. Okay, you know what? Let's just do what we can do. Just do what we can do. Shit. Um, where's Daenerys is probably a better question. Minus 9%. She's in King's Landing. Who are our commanders? Is it just... This is all just war score from the Reach. They've got 66,000 troops. Oh, God. Okay, and that's just one. That's just like their most significant army, right? Um, we could go siege the Westerlands. That would be a big dick play. It's going to cost me a lot of money to get over there, isn't it? You know what? Let's just do whatever sieging we can. Let's just try and keep things afloat. Robert Baratheon's going to have to do the big fights here. We'll just do what we can. I don't think I can really help out too much. They're going to come down and they are absolutely going to smash us to bits, aren't they? Even chances. And then you've got Seaguard reinforcing. I can't. I don't understand exactly where the hell we're going to go. 
Because we're going to die just trying to get to reinforce these troops. That is a lost battle. Oh, Bobby B has fucked it. We're getting massacred. Minus 83% in the war against Daenerys already. Oh, God. But Ned, uh, look, Ned's not just going to be like, okay, well, that's, that's it. We're fucked. Let's just go home. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep on fighting until we can't fight anymore. Which might not be long at this point. Oh, my God. We were never going to win this. <laughs> we were never going to win this. <laughs> 134,000 versus 40,000, by the way. Christ. Well, we gave him a good fight. We gave him a good fight. God. Oh, Maester Lewin actually died for real this time. Died of pneumonia. Oh, what a horrible day. What a horrible day. Keep fighting. Oh, God, he's had a bad dream. I had a dream where I was in a realm of darkness and nothing but darkness. Is it prophetic, do you think? I was going to say, maybe he dies on the battlefield here. We're doing what we can. Oh, my best friend, have you heard what they call you? They call you Lord Eddard the Wise Wolf. It's on the lips of peasants and noble alike. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. We're probably going to be beheaded in a second, but that's lovely. Children receive one to three extra skill points. We can pop that one in fast. Ooh, shit. Hold on. Marin got two extra diplomacy, which is kind of nuts. John Stark got three marshal, which kind of rounds him out. Rickard got three marshal, too. This kid is going to be a monster. He's going to be a martial monster, isn't he? Arthur Stark, the tiny child, uh, three intrigue. I could train this kid in intrigue. I think that could help quite a lot. You can start learning Valyrian. That is a big brain play right there. Uh, somebody, please. Somebody good educate this child. Give it to Lord Roose Bolton. I feel that's an awful idea. Ah, <sighs> Micken. Courtsmith. He's an elusive shadow. I want you to educate uh, Arthur, if you would. Jesus. Okay, that's something. I'll look for a better... I'll look for someone better later. We just can't even, like, could we maybe do some damage down here? Like, we could, we could maybe at least finish a siege. We might, we might be, just be able to bring this back. Though I don't think it would be a much more interesting ending if, if the Targaryens won. New Lord Commander. Who is that? Aemon Bentley. Excellent. Wow, look at you. In awe at the size of that lad. We've won the siege. Holy shit. We're actually doing something here. They will remember the day that we sieged. Where is this? Southstone. Oh, yeah. Everyone's going to remember that. Brilliant. Oh, Christ. Okay. Minus 98%. The Targaryens have won. I have surrendered to Queen Daenerys. I'm no longer free to return home or travel as I wish. We've been imprisoned. Oh, God. As punishment for the crime of treason, she has taken Darren, my son, as hostage. There is little I can do. Oh, God. And we've been freed. And there it is. We lost the war led by Robert the Usurper against Queen Daenerys Stormborn. My lord, a letter marked with the seal of House Targaryen has arrived from King's Landing. Raven spreading across the realm. The messenger gives a quick bow and hands me the letter to peruse. Queen Daenerys Targaryen has taken the Iron Throne for Robert Baratheon and has been proclaimed the new monarch of the Seven Kingdoms. Though many call her usurper in hushed tones, there's no denying that the Iron Throne is firmly within her grasp. Before resuming my task, I wonder for a brief moment what her rule shall bring. Holy shit. That's mad. You want a marriage, though? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to marry someone? <laughs> what about my son, Rickard? She will not accept. Why will she not accept? Because it's her own marriage. She's marrying down. What if, what if, like, matrilineal? She will accept it matrilineally. Oh, my God. I don't think Ned's the type of guy to play... to play that game. Wow. Um... Let's talk about that. Okay, invalidated. So Tywin's war was invalidated. This was this was lost. The second Tywin declared his war. They might have had a chance. With the West Island's troops, it's only another 20k, admittedly. The Vale staying neutral really did fuck us. The Riverland staying neutral fucked us even more. I, I couldn't have called them in because it wasn't our war even if we were allied, I don't think. Whoa, what a goddamn mess. So what happens now? It's all going to fall back under the House Targaryen. And she's actually a really good ruler, so I think she'll be fine. Compassionate, honest, 
authoritative. She's quick and she's beautiful. Everyone's going to love her. Everyone's going to love her and she's going to be... I mean, we've got we've got two paths we can go down. I can expose Jon Snow's parentage, reveal that he is, in fact, Daenerys' nephew, born to her brother, Rhaegar, and... Who was he married to before? Oh, it just says Elia and Elia. Interesting. We reveal that he was born to Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark. There's no downside to doing this. I think we... I think we do it. As a way to keep the dynasty safe, we'd just be like, whoa, 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 hold on. You can't you can't fuck with House Stark. This this one's one of yours. You see, this one's one of, I've kept him safe all these years. This is your nephew. Maybe she'd take it as a, uh, as an affront, though. This kid is more uh, technically higher up the line of succession to you, and now I'm going to clap your cheeks. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I wish I could divorce. We would never do this, because, of course, they're still best friends. Even though Robert Brathian is the un unlanded... Uh, totally just just holds nothing anymore. They're still best friends. Ned wouldn't turn his back on him. So Stannis is Lord Paramount of the Stormlands? Who's Lord Paramount of the Stormlands? Oh, Daenerys kept it for herself. Stannis has Dragonstone, so he's going to be pissed. Okay, and what happened to Renly? Renly died. It was executed by Daenerys. Because, of course, he backed Robert Baratheon. Shit. Wow, this is messy, isn't it? What the hell do we do? We, we got two parts. We can marry uh, Daenerys, but I feel like that is a slap in the face of Robert Baratheon. They fought to overthrow the Targaryens. To then marry a kid into the Targaryens would be uh, monstrous. It would be monstrous. The Mad King executed Ned's dad. Uh, I just It just doesn't seem right. But then we've also got a Targaryen in court. Oh, God. Okay, well, there you go. There's the Iron Throne. Reformed under Daenerys. I just don't think Ned would do it. He wouldn't do it. Would he expose the parentage? I think we just sit for now. I think we sit for now because there is a potential that we could expose his parentage and maybe get the backing of everybody instead of Daenerys. It would get all the Northern Lords on side. Maybe the Stormlands would be up for it as well, depending on who is landed. Lady Paramount Ariane Baratheon. Renly's daughter got the Stormlands. Renly and some... Uh, Alenda Karen, whoever that is. So it's a Baratheon on the Stormlands. They might back us. Mace would never back us. Tywin would never back us. And the Riverlands might back us too. Shit. We could potentially do something here. Lord John of the Vale. Is there anything we could do with House Aaron? Maybe some sort of marriage there? Still mar marrying for... for uh, I mean, Ned would still marry someone out over here to... Uh... Oh, God's trying to do something there. You're already betrothed though, aren't you? House Templeton, bollocks. Okay, let's let him cook. Let's let him cook and see what happens. Karen Stark became a diplomatic courtier, and there we are. Lords and nobles from across Westeros have gathered in King's Island to bear witness to the new queen. The High Septum anoints Daenerys with seven oils, places the crown upon her head, and announces, In the light of the House of the Seven, I now proclaim Daenerys of House Targaryen, Queen of the Andals, the Royal and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of the Round. Long may she reign. Remain silent and clap. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. She got a nickname. Did she gave a nickname? Queen's and Eris, the realm's delight. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Her heir is Robert Baratheon, though. But if we announce John as a Targaryen, her heir becomes John. And then if something happens to Daenerys, she falls down a flight of stairs or is pushed out of a, slips out of a window. Jon Snow becomes... King of the Seven Kingdoms. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is too much pressure. <laughs> um, pay homage. No, we're okay. Thank you. We need to sit up in Winterfell for a while and decide exactly what the plan is. We need a maester. At the very minimum, we're going to need a maester. Hello. Is Maester Elton. Amazing. Thank you. He's a schemer. Ooh. Are you now? A ruthless, deceitful schemer. Oh, shit. Treacherous antagonist. You could be useful, depending on what we do here. Maybe Meren. How I, I'm interested to see what what Marin thinks of of John. They they could be friends. They're certainly not rivals. John's rivals with my caravan master. I guess he wants a job. I'm not sure. You're friends with uh, Diwan Frog. 
obviously us, and then whoever that is as well. Jorah, Jorah Mormont of Bear Island. That's Jorah Mormont's son, Jorah Mormont. As in, uh, like, Jorah Mormont from the, from the original series, Jorah Mormont. Okay. Christ. We could do something here. Maybe, maybe when we play as Marin, because he's such a diplomat, he wants his younger brother, John, to manifest destiny and helps him take the throne. That would be awesome because then we, Marin gets the spotlight, but also so does John, which was the original plan. It's a win-win all around. And, you know, like, forget about all the other Starks. Lord Brandon, hello. What can I help? You want a royal visit? Done. Easy. I think we bide our time for a while. We let the ram recover because right now we have 1.1 income. We've got to let the troops reinforce. We've got to bring a bit of peace to the ram. Give them some time to breathe. We can't immediately go bang another war right away. Because Daenerys has proven she's got plenty of uh, plenty of allies. A pallid individual looks as if she spent her entire life skulking underground and soaking in the corner of my throne room. I heard tell you might want a secret passage installed. I can craft any impure corridor your twisted heart desires. Nope, goodbye. Ned would never do that. Ned would never. He's a good boy. Um, we can hold court, which to be fair, we probably should. I'm going to put that on ice for a while, no pun intended. And we'll worry about Jon Snow's parentage later on. Let's hold court. And let's just see if we can... We can see what we can do anyway. In a brief moment of silence, I see Lady Barbara Nary in her eyes before realizing it's her turn to speak. My liege! Uh, as she says, giving her some precious time to finalize her thoughts before continuing. Spars of laughter, a great indicator of a lively court. Thus, I have a suggestion for someone who can make a great gesture. My liege, uh, if I may, Lord Albert speaks up. A jester would ruin the sophisticated air of this court, replace its refinement with crude infantile humor. Would Ned have a jester? I feel like he would, I would think he would see a little joy in that. I think, you know what? He would do it for his children. I don't think he'd be a big fan of it. Um, perhaps I'll look into it another time. This is not a peasant's market. It just has no place in this court. I can appoint Lady Barbara as the fool, or I can appoint Lord Albert. No, I just want to make someone a jester. I don't want to make either of these two a jester. We'll just say I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Gory Borders. Lord Rickard of Carhold claims the Lordship of Everwood, held by Lord John, is, uh, and sworn directly to as part of his de jure territory. Um. Okay. Because we're just, we gain a critical amount of stress either way. Okay, so we're losing a territory, I suppose, but we lose less stress than we would have because we are just. Okay, so we've got a... This guy is probably his legitimate vassal then. Lordship of Everwood. That does look like House Car Starks. House Stark is the traditional hold of Lordship of Everwood. So the John of Everwood is in the relates to the... Okay. Honestly, do it. Ned's a just man. And, and one of those options gave us slightly less stress than the other, so that must be what Ned wants to do, right? A provincial merchant steps forward, clearly out of his element is in my rich halls. Well, that's not going too far. Come, man, I don't have all day. Yes, my lord, he stammers. I'm Norrin, representing the disgruntled traders of Hallertown, Alpine's greatest city. Garena, our mistress, is a barrier to commerce and the town's interest. We humbly ask you to be replaced by someone else. If we do that, we gain civic meddling. You shall be the new mistress. I don't know if Norrin necessarily wants to become a mistress. What does Grana have to say? The crown will compensate the town's merchant. Oh, God, none of these are right. It's all tyrannical. Let's see if we can dig up some incompetence. How about that? And we did. Evidence of her incompetence is found. Ned is a, a diligent, just man. He would want to try and find if there was corruption in his realm. But now he's about to have a breakdown. And to be fair, I get it. We did just fight an enormously losing war for no reason other than honor's sake. A trip to the brothel, or he becomes reclusive. Oh, God. Bite his lip and try to stay focused. Honestly, he would just stiff up a lip, and he would buckle down, and he would live his life. Um, so, like, hello, my friend. You, you have gifts for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think we leave it there for today, and I will take, I will take advice from the council of the comment section on, on what would be the play here. Because I think we've got a lot of different... Uh, I think all of the paths are equally interesting. We could marry someone to Daenerys. We could reveal Jon Snow. Uh, maybe that would stop her declaring war on us. That would be the intrigue play. That's what you would do if you were metagaming and you're trying to be a big brain Crusader Kings player. I'm not a Crusade big brain Crusader Kings player, so I would never have thought of that. So that's not going to happen. I think that revealing Jon Snow's parentage is certainly the most interesting play. But I also think there needs to be a good character reason for Ned doing that. Rather than just doing it because, like, he knows that would put a, a, a big target on the dynasty's back. So I'm, I'm open to uh, 
the council of the comment section giving me some 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 strong arguments one way or another for what direction we take this in but i love this story in the way it's developed because this has opened a door wide to put the spotlight on so many different members of our dynasty and i i'm i'm all about it let's see what happens shall we and given that i'm currently doing on average 3.3 .3 episodes a day i better give a shout out to the one and only patrons for allowing me the time to do that in the first place a big thank you to ziggy captain full send anemone an enemy of anemones ghost talk methanius mika adikos pokemon backer you turret 95 good doggo phantom volpine ox wrecker todd howard crow skull abby Ornett, sideshow c vox dei walter bledsoe cat lord griff psycho fire scaps commissar fox oil bucket and Gamer Man 7799 for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Thank you all for your support over there. Thank you for making the channel possible. And a thank you in addition to what's happened to my list. Oh, I see what's happened to my list. Some names have duplicated. I can fix that. Thank you to God's Nut, Slime Jack, Cast the Red, Arsene Darjean, Mikey Rock, Betimus Max, Adrissa, Otty Sphinx, Andrew McKinnon, Serge Devil as Elliptic, John Duckworth, Adamski, XD, Zen Master, and here as well. What a day. What a war.